Self-care refers to the concept of taking time out of your day to care for yourself in order to enjoy a better quality of life. The Oxford Dictionary describes self-care as the practice of taking action to preserve or improve one's health. It embodies taking care of your overall physical, emotional, and spiritual health. Gently paraphrased from selfcareshower.com. I'm Stephen Middleton, coming to you from the Possibility Action Network. Our core values include I am, I can, and I will. I am Possibility Man. Today, I want to share on the theme self care, a standard in health care. I've been thinking about this topic for some time now. We all know the horror stories concerning the health care industry. Many of us are aware of several of the problems, you know, disparities of health care. Someone did a commercial about the color of health care. I've heard some people even refer to the health care industry as a disease care industry. We all can point to certain problems dealing with health care. But I want to point you back to something that many of you already know. So I'm not teaching, trying to teach you something new. I'm here to offer a reminder about self-care being a standard in health care. You know, I am just thrilled by seeing what people are doing today to improve their health. Let me give you just two examples. I know of an individual who lives in the country. I think the closest city to her is probably at least 20 miles away. There are no gymnasiums or swimming pools where she lives because she lives in the country. But there is a high school that that's about three miles or less from where she lives, and the high school has a track. It just gratified my heart to hear recently that that individual who is close to 70 years of age joins other women in her community around 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the morning to go to the track and walk around the track together. Isn't that wonderful that these individuals are taking responsibility for their health? There's another individual who surprised me. He is a man in the country again. He has a bunch of cattle and he has a bunch of land. And one day I visited him and I saw his cattle and I asked him, hey, do you ever, uh, do you, uh, you know, uh, slaughter your cows and cut them up in steaks and, you know, enjoy steaks and share any of this meat with your community? He stopped in his tracks and he looked at me dead on and he said, I do not eat meat. I had some questions for him. I wanted him to talk about it. I wanted him to find out his motivations for trying not to consume beef product. It could have been that he has a cholesterol problem. It could have been that he wanted to lower his cholesterol and he discovered that withholding meat from his diet was helpful in that particular way. These two examples, and I'm sure that you have examples, and we'd love for you to jot those examples into the text box and share them with others who come to this video. Those individuals are aware that self-care is important, and I am advancing the idea that self-care is a standard in health care. I want to offer five tips well, again, five tips that you know well that may be helpful to you and to me as we try to improve our health. 
The first is hydration. You know, we all know about this. I'm sure you've seen people walking around with water bottles and the like. Some people say that you should drink at least 50% of your body weight in ounces. Uh, in my case, you know, I need to be drinking about 120 ounces a day if that's true. So we know that hydration is important. And hydration is especially important if you are engaged in physical activity. Hydration then improves the flow of digested food. When you hydrate yourself, you're able to flush out some of the toxins that you may have consumed from foods, you know, the day before. It's a wonderful thing if you're able to, if you're able to flow on a daily basis. If you're able to flow first thing when you get up in the morning or after breakfast in the morning, if you're able to just flow to allow the food that's digested to just to flow through your system. Hydration helps the flow of foods, the flow of toxins out of your body. I heard a, a naturopath, naturopathic doctor put it this way, train in, train out, a kind of humorous way to put it, but you want to improve the flow of the foods that you digest that goes into your body system. You know, I also discovered that hydration also improves the function of our cells. And as you learn in school, the cells are the foundation you know, of the body. Hydration improves the function of the cells, helps the cells remain healthy. Number two, and once again, this is not new to you. I'm here to simply remind you, and of course remind myself, of these items that are important in our health. The second on my list is nutrition. We all know that. We know that writers say that you should eat a colorful plate. You know, green vegetables, purple vegetables, red vegetables, yellow vegetables, all of these colorful, the more colorful the plate, the better. That's a wonderful thing to eat the colors every day. Whole grains are also good. You know, you want to avoid white rice or processed rice or any processed food for that matter, but whole grains, you know, um, it could be brown rice is a good one. Uh, another one is wild rice. Now, some people would say that wild rice has the husk on it. There could be polyphenols in those husks, but wild rice is also a good choice. And lots and lots of vegetables. Eat your broccoli, eat your spinach like Popeye, the sailor man, is also a good thing. And speaking of broccoli, I was listening to a doctor earlier today, and he mentioned that not only the broccoli cloves, the broccoli fire flowers, he said are good for you, he said that the bar broccoli stalk is especially good for you. He caught my attention because just yesterday when I ate a broccoli, a broccoli, I cut off the flowers. And guess what I did to the stem, to the stalk? I threw the stalk away. Bad boy, bad boy, bad boy. I will not do that again because I'm discovering that the stalk of the broccoli is also good for you. Legumes. I didn't know what that word meant until maybe four or five months ago. Legumes refer to beans. Eat a variety of beans, all sorts of dry beans. They are good for you. They are good for us. This is a part of nutrition that's good for us. There is a doctor. His name is William Lee. He wrote a very fine book entitled, Beat disease. And there's a strong subtitle to it as well. What he was suggesting in his book is that we can deploy our food for better health. Now, he simply insists that it's more than a slogan when we say that food is medicine. He is saying that food is medicine. So we do want to eat a healthy diet. Here's the third one that all of us are aware of. I'm here simply to remind us, and of course remind myself, that movement is important. You want to engage in movement every day. Now, I am avoiding the word exercise deliberately, because it's not just exercise, but just body movement 
every day. You know, when I was younger, and if you were in my age group and we were younger, we all did a lot of movement. We didn't do a lot of exercises per se, but we walked in the field, up and down those roads, do, doing whatever we did, plow with a mule, you know, doing whatever we did, you know, work in the sawmill, just a lot of different movement. And everyone can move. Not only the young, but also to the old. In fact, as we age, movement becomes even more important. And it's not only those who are physically able to walk, but even those individuals who are wheelchair bound, who cannot walk. Movement is important. The more we move, the better. Movement is a significant part of improving our health. It improves our strength. It improves our bone density. It improves our flexibility. You know, if you are wheelchair bound, what you may want to do is try to move your shoulders just up and down. Or if you can move your hand just a little bit to move your hand to the left and to the right and to the left and to the right. The point is that movement is critical to self-care. Movement is an important part of the standard in healthcare that I'm referring to today. And here is a fourth standard that many of us ignore, and it's called, I'm calling it social interaction, connectedness, connected, being connected to other people. I'm going to tell you something. Everyone benefits from social interaction, but especially those individuals who may be plagued with an emotional challenge or an emotional disorder. In fact, virtually everyone on the planet can benefit from increased social interaction. I have not done any studies, but I'm going to go out on the limb now just to say that even individuals who may be stricken by the malady called schizophrenia may benefit from social interaction. They may benefit from someone telling them that they love them. They may benefit from someone spending some time with them. Actually, I've seen this Real, 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 a real life example that an individual could be depressed in one hour and before that hour expires, be full of life and full of energy because of social interaction. We do our children a disservice when we do not interact with them, when we allow them to live in isolation. We do our loved ones a disservice when we allow them to live in isolation. Showing love, being connected to other individuals is a significant part in the standard of healthcare that I'm referring to as self-care. And there is a fifth element that's critical to your health. But I'm going to invite you to send me a message and ask me for it, and I'll send you this fifth element via a private text message. Now back to social interaction for a moment. I referenced Dr. William Lee a moment ago. He is a scientist once again a research scientist. He's actively engaged in researching topics concerning health. He's also a medical doctor, and he works with patients literally around the world. He was asked once, and the interviewer probably was expecting a different type of topic. He said, well, Dr. Lee, if you were going to leave this planet forever, what three truths would you want to take with you? And the interviewer even pointed the way he asked, would it be one of your books or would it be whatever? Dr. Lee pondered for a moment. And here is what he had to say that points me back to social interaction. He said the first truth that he would want to carry with him is kindness, to be kind in the world. Now get that. 
He wasn't simply saying to be kind in my family, and of course that's important. To be kind in my religion, that could be important. To be kind in my spirit, he didn't say, he said to be kind in the world. To show kindness in the world. To show compassion in the world. To show love in the world. I was uh, he stopped me, Dr. Lee, that is, stopped me in my tracks when he said to show kindness in the world as one of the truths that he want, would want to carry with him. And the second one really got my attention because he said, believe in the impossible. Now, the person who founded the Possibility Action Network heard him say that, and then he continued by saying, the word impossible has the uh, possible in it. Believe in the impossible, not as a slogan, but as a way of life. And he told the story about his mother who had been stricken, if I, if I caught it right, with cancer. All of her doctors had given up on him, on her. They just told her that she had so many, you know, days or, or weeks to live. But Dr. Lee said that he believed in the impossible. That is, he believed in the possible. And sure enough, by working with his mother, his mother lived a longer time after. Hey, don't give up. Never give up. No matter what the situation is, never get about. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible for an individual to fill in the blank. What impossibility are you looking at today? And I'm suggesting that maybe that impossibility is possible. Fill in the blank yourself. It is possible. It's even possible to reverse chronic diseases. We spend so much time talking about chronic diseases, I am advocating that we spend more time talking about the possibility of reversing chronic diseases. Also in groups that we say somehow because of whatever are plagued with these problems. You know, even medical doctors are recognizing now that giving a pill for every ill is not the best strategy. Now notice, I am not saying that one should never consume a pill, but giving a pill for every ill is not the best strategy. We can embrace what's possible, embrace the possibility, and who knows, you may discover something that's gonna solve a lot of problems in the world today. When he talked about, Dr. Lee, that is, be kind in the world, and when he mentioned believe, in the possibility, I think he is pointing to something that's higher, something that's spiritual, something that's uh, positive and that's in positive psychology, something that involves social interaction. And then the scientist adds, science leads the way. I'll modify that a little bit, Dr. Lee, by advancing this idea is that science is one of the agents that leads the way. Because the human being, as a spiritual organism, is discovering today, more than at any other time in human history, how powerful we are as beings. Not simply human beings, but as beings, the humanness sometimes takes us away because it gets us into our groups. It gets us, it gets us into our silos. It gets us into our religion, uh, religions. But when we realize that we are beings beyond our groups, beyond our silos, beyond our foxholes, then we are touching on something that's quite higher. So science is pointing to some wonderful things today. The world in 50 years is going to be much different from the world that we live in today because science and spirituality and social beings believing in social interaction are discovering that we are made to heal. 
that we are made to reverse diseases, that we are made to thrive as beings in the world. And why do I say that? Well, just think about it. This organism of ours has more chemistry than anything we, will, we may ever be able to perceive with the human mind. This being of ours has more spiritual qualities that we may ever be able to understand with the human mind. And as sophisticated as we are, let's face it, we know that we have a, a, a physical immune system in the body which helps us heal, but we have just begun to tap into the possibilities that are in the human immune system. I heard a, a spirituality teacher once uh, who, who said that, uh, that a, a philosopher named Sidney Banks taught him that we have an emotional human, human, uh, immune system. We have a physical immune system. We also have a, an emotional immune system that allows us to free ourselves from the stress, to free ourselves from the psychological baggages that hold us down, that which allows us to better heal our bodies. The next 50 years, Oh my gosh, it's an, it's an exciting time. I'm not going to be here for all of it, but I'm going to be here for some of it. But it's an exciting time for the human on planet Earth. And then I'm going to leave you now with a quote from Dr. Lee, the author of Beat Disease. And the book has a much longer title. And this is what he says. It's time to end the confusion about food and health. We all make decisions every day that affects our health and well-being, especially when it comes to food. The time has come for us to start thinking about what we eat in a new way. What we eat can help us live longer healthier lives. Once again, Dr. William Lee, the author of the book, Beat Disease. I want to offer one last thing. Yeah, I love children. I love the youth. These innocent beings who know nothing except that which we give to them. I want to offer this tip concerning human beings and, and the children that you see in the world. Gently, gently share with them the benefits of dropping the consumption of pop. I'm not going to name any specific pop. And by pop, I mean soda pop. You know, just gently wean them off of soda pop. You know, maybe just start with, if, you're, if they're doing three or four pops a week, soda pops a week, you know, drop them down to one pop a week. And eventually... Take them off pop forever if you can. And lovingly let them know that consuming pop, soda pop, is not good for their health. Another thing we can gently offer our young people is to show them how to back away from processed foods. I heard a doctor once say, not only that processed foods exist, he even says that they're super processed foods. You know, processed and super processed foods. Those foods that are not good for us. Gently pull our kids away from processed foods, from those meats, you know, that are like, like brick, you know, you got to cut them up and slice them up and they can stay in the refrigerator for two weeks or whatever like that. Stay away from those things. That would help improve their health. That will help reduce their weight so that they can be healthier and, and live healthier lives. There's much more that we can share on this topic. We're not going to let it go because we know that this is the path of the human in the 21st century. I'm Stephen Middleton, coming to you from the Possibility Action Network. Our core values include, I am, I can, and I will. I am Possibility Man. Until next time, good day.